All right, it says we are live. Welcome to another Tuesday night gun chat. Sorry, I've been busy and sick, and the kids were sick and asleep when I got home last night, uh, last time, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to chill with them, too. So I, that's what I did. Um, anyway, I chilled rocking my daughter back to sleep and decided that was more important. So sorry about not being here the last few weeks, but uh, <coughs> I'm slowly getting over it. <coughs> Still coughing the flame every once in a while. So anyway. If you haven't been to a late night gun chat, you ask me your questions. I give you my answers. They're worth exactly what you paid for them. Unless, of course, you give me a super chat, then my answers are worth probably less than what you paid for them. So I hope you're doing, everyone's doing well. Share this with your friends and just ask me your questions. Go ahead and say hi in the chat because uh, I do not know you're here if you do not say you're hi. I don't get a list of anything from YouTube on who's watching. I just get, you know, whoever says in the chat. So go ahead and say that. Share this link with your friends and let them come in too, especially your liberal friends. Let's uh, go make fun of them a lot. So anyway, uh, hope uh, everybody's doing well. So I will definitely shout out the chat. Give it a few seconds. Um, got some cool things coming up on the channel. Uh, tomorrow's video will be reviewing the, uh, finally get the review up of the JTS-12 shotgun. Uh, it's taken me a while, but it's uh, pretty good and I've got that up. So anyway. Uh, some make sure you watch tomorrow's video coming out tomorrow. So and then, uh, you know, I've got some more Banshee stuff coming up and I've got uh, a few more uh, videos, uh, 308 stuff coming up. Uh, so that's that. All right. Let's shout out the chat. First one here was, of course, G23. Good to see you. Followed by Hunter Kirk. He says spring is coming on strong here. Yeah, it's easing its way into it. It's like a southern accent just drawing its way. It's a getting there. That's how spring is up here. All right, you know. Uh, what's up, Hunter Kirk? Living the dream, he says. Luminous Dave, how you doing? Way out there in Bethel, right? Or is it Dillingham? I can't ever remember. Sorry, Luminous Dave. Real Alaska. Not, not, uh, not fake city Alaska here, you know. All right, let's see. Keith Gregory, good to see you. TNY Rag. All right. Or Raggy. All right. Hey, man, that is awesome to see you here. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining. All right. We've got uh, Brutal Bob. I already said Keith Gregory. Uh, top of the evening to you, AB. Top of the evening to you. Is that even a thing? Do you say top of the evening? Is it, I thought it was just top of the morning. Anyway. All right. Since 73, what's up? How you doing? Since 73 YouTube channel. Cool. Uh, what kind of YouTube videos do you make? Go ahead and, you know, uh, post it in there. and Everybody go subscribe if you want to. What's up, Colin Whitlock? Long time no see, both in the chat and in person. It's been, geez, you came into my kid's, like, nearly first birthday party when we had we were down in Georgia. He was nearly one years old, and now he's going to be four. It's been three years since that day. It feels like yesterday, man. How do we get old, man? How do we get old? Played high school football with Colin. Um, he whipped my butt every time. So anyway, I wasn't that good. All right. Dusty bow hunter. I wish I could stay for a while, but I gotta be up in a few hours to go turkey hunting. All right. Sounds good. All right. Good luck. Send me some, uh, turkey breast. All right. Take care, brother. Good luck. Plowhammer. What's up? Have a good evening. What's up? Bear claw 700. Hi from Wyoming. Hello. How you do? Okay. We got our, uh, Keith Reese is here from Georgia. Howdy from South Dakota, David Posey, I think he's from Tennessee, if I remember correctly. There you go. Got a first question, Luminous Dave. Do you think the Henry Big Boy Model X could handle 44 mag coated hard gas and penetrator? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my 4570 handles it all the time. Okay. Yeah. My 4570 Model X. Just sitting right down there. I wish a bear would break into my house. I mean, no, I don't wish that. So, anyway. Trying to fill a second one now. There you go, Dusty Bow Hunter. All right. From South Dakota. Good. And let's see. Dillingham. Yep. There we go. Disastrous Effect, who just ordered his uh, CMMG Banshee. So thank you, CMMG, for sending it out. Let me review it. It's been pretty good. Make sure you pay attention to the buffer weights and your your springs uh, um, and, and your rounds. Um, the 30 round it comes with doesn't feed as good as the Glock mags. But if you have a used Glock mag, it also doesn't hold the Bopo open as well as that. So, you know, just kind of is what it is. I'd rather take the feeding myself. What's up, Chris Heisman? 
There he is. Any particular build for 375 H&H? &H, any specific custom builder you prefer or would recommend looking to get an Alaska model 375 H&H? &H? Thanks. Um, no, not really. I'm not into custom builds. You might talk to, believe it or not, all people, New York Prepper, NY Prepper. Um, you might talk to him. And of course, he's moved to Pennsylvania now. Um, but like, you might talk to him. He has a lot of custom builds done by his local gunsmith. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, for the money, 12, 13, 1400 bucks, that Ruger M77 guide gun in 375 H&H &H is a good one to have. Um, it works. It's accurate. Um, you know, then go get a gunsmith to tune it and smooth it out and all that kind of stuff. So it just doesn't feel like a factory Ruger. That'd be, the, that would be way, that would be the way my cheap butt would go. Um, if I were going to build, I'd probably get a Savage action because it's really easy to get barrels and that are good for Savage and they're fairly easy to change yourself. Um, supposedly, but it is what it is. Oh, 375 Ruger is perfect for Alaska. Yeah. I already have, I have already ordered the suppressor buffer for it. Cool. Nice. Okay. G23 or Glock 19? Um, I prefer the Glock 19. I prefer that, that size handgun should just be a nine millimeter. You know what I mean? It should just be a nine millimeter. Like the 40 just, I had one blow up on me early in the days. So I prefer the Glock 19. That was when people were loading 40 kind of hot too. And so that, um, yeah. So, uh, Luminous Dave, go check out my uh, 40 Smith & Wesson versus 10 millimeter video. I think you'll be surprised because uh, there is Underwood Hardcast for 40 Smith & Wesson. All right. As long as it's more about bullet construction than power, guys. Uh, if you can place your shot where you want to, that's 95% of the game or 90% of the game, as I like to say. The next 9% is bullet construction and the next 1% is power. That adds up to 100 for those of you that can't do math because of Common Core. But anyway, um, yeah, that adds up to 100, and uh, like that bullet construction is really important. So, is what it is. Of course, G23 says a G23. That would make sense. What's up, Kevin Claus? Grandma woke up to a pistol whip, got tied to a chair. When the robber went downstairs, she recovered her 357 and put two in his chest. She received several 9mm but survived. Oh, wow. Wow, well, that is, uh, I, I, if that's your grandmother, I am praying for her and Hoping she recovers, and I'm hoping the guy gets what he deserves, uh, either in hell or in jail. Either way. Um, well, I mean, honestly, I actually hope he wakes up and repents, and then gets with the earthly consequences of his sin. But that is my problem. So, all right, we got a, a brutal Bob. It's got Randy Selby for the 375 H&H build. There you go. Yeah, I would go 375 Ruger. It's a much better cartridge. It's designed to get out of a 20-inch barrel or 22 inch barrel, what it takes a 26 inch barrel to get in the 375 H and H. So I would definitely go 375 Ruger, especially if you, I mean, you're going to have to hand load for either one. So it makes no sense. So I did not get your text earlier. Sorry about that. It may have gotten here, but Oh, I think I did. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yep. So I did. Yeah, Joshua. Did you get my email response? Sorry, I sent it late at night, about five days later. Sorry I was there. So. Yep. 375 Ruger as well. Yep. I would go that, that route. Cool. Thanks for the recommendations. You're welcome. So sorry for granny, but I'm off 9mm also. Won't carry it. My EDC is a 1911-45 ACB. There you go. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, again, good hollow points, good shot placement. You got to hit them with about 5 to 10 rounds, 9mm to do the job. But, yeah, my best friend growing up who has huge hands, we both block, got Glock 21s together and Glock 30s together. We were all sh always shooting. I have small hands. We are always shooting 45 ACP. Yeah, 45, 45. He switched to 9mm after that story where the guy using a Glock 21 uh, fired over 100 shots and couldn't get penetration on a guy with drugs. It's a bigger guy who was on drugs. So, yeah. So, don't think don't think just because you had a 45, it takes care of the problem. You still have to make a good shot with a good bullet construction. Okay? 
I think he was using uh, like a plus P spear gold dot, so it just didn't penetrate as well. No, man, we only have mosquitoes that will carry you off. You have not been in mosquitoes till you've been on the North Slope uh, in the summer. Yeah. We have mosquitoes that will carry you the freak off. And somehow, the worse the snow, the worse the winter, the more mosquitoes there are. So. Uh, are you saying I prefer capacity over caliber? If you've been in combat, you'd understand it savagely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what you're trying to say there. But, uh, I get it. Capacity over caliber. So, you take your 15 9 millimeters over 8, uh, 45 any day of the week. I'm the same way. But why, but I also carry, like, 10 millimeter most of the time. I can carry my Glock 29 is my main carry gun now. Well, it's an expander manual. It's just that I don't need continue precision for my 6.5 PRC. Never used them before. It's beyond me. You can educate me on them next time, Plowhammer. You can educate me on them next time. Capacity over caliber. Yeah, I agree with that. 9 millimeter carry loads and underwood extreme penetrators in Liberty Civil Defense. Okay. The extreme penetrators are good. Civil Defense is bad. Okay. It underpenetrates. It's vastly underpenetrated. I don't care what they say about 12 inches in gel. In gel. Uh, gel is not as tough as a human body, in my opinion. So it doesn't have the different layerings and thicknesses of, of the body. So I would I, I would definitely say uh, carry loads uh, would be, why don't you just carry extreme defenders? Carry that 68 grain plus P plus extreme defender. I'm trying to see if I have any here. But yeah, that would be a good one. But yeah, Liberty Civil Defense is a, is a great watermelon sp splitting round, but it's not a great, uh, not a great um, defensive round. Yeah, the snow molds warm, snow molds, and then it warms up, allowing them to breed. Ah, yep. I spent June of nineteen ninety two in those mosquitoes. They were horrid. Yeah, farther north you go. I carry a Glock twenty in my back. It was a Glock nineteen. Um, yep, yeah, I usually get. If I'm going to the woods with two Glocks, it's usually my Model 40 and my Model 29. So they do make high capacity 45. I got one sitting next to me. So expander mandrels I use on brass after I kneeled them the first time. They are kind of useless unless you're only running progressive presses. There you go. Should I get an AR-15 and 5.56 or an AR-10 and 308? I like the plink, but I also want to hunt a bit with it. The 5.56 would also be a superior plinker, but the 308 would be better in the woods. The answer is both. Um, if you're going to concentrate on one at a time for financial reasons, I say get the more expensive AR-10 308 first. Um, watch my MeWe page and my arms directory page for uh, aero precision sales and PSA sales and ballistic advantage sales. Um, they always have some good AR-10 stuff. Uh, Facts and firearms, uh, they always have some good AR-10 stuff. So watch that MeWe page for that and, uh, you know, and the arms directory page. So that's that. Um, that's, speaking of which, Natchez had some awesome stuff today. If you missed it out, go go check it out. They had some awesome prices on 223 and um, 5.56. Awesome for these days. I mean, they weren't back to pre-2019 levels, but yeah. 2020 levels. Which do you prefer on your pistols? An open dot, red dot, or a closed one? I prefer a closed one that uh, that uh, protects the dot, but I prefer iron sights to dot still. I can find the iron sights faster. Um, I've got the Siley Optics. Uh, it's not the bear. It's the bull. It's really nice. It's really nice. It's been on since I've got it. No issues. But I just has it, uh, um, you know, just it's harder to find that dot. Like I've got, I'm still doing a lot of dry firing with it because I can't find that dot. So if you could go back in time to hunt a T-Rex, what gun would you use? 
458 Win Mag or 458 Lot be enough? Again, uh, bullet construction and penetration would be key. Um, I would be, th I would, I, I'd be using a M2 on the back of a Jeep, but um, yeah, uh, T Rex, um, I, I'd say probably 458 Win Mag or 460 Weatherby. Um, just because you can actually find the ammo for it. 458 lots are to find. Yeah, the best all-around rifle is an AR-10-308. It'll do everything you want or need to do. Okay, the problem with saying that is, yes, it's great for home defense. Yes, it's great for plinking. Yes, it's great for hunting. You Like, I, I hunted bear the other night with my AR-10-308. Right. It's a great firearm. Okay, yes, it's hard, heavier, but, you know, it is what it is. It's the best all-around. The problem is for home defense... All right. Most people are, you know, fairly tightly packed in in their suburban neighborhoods and stuff. And for home defense, you want a round that's going to expand quickly and uh, not exit the intruder so that it doesn't go into your neighbor's house or into your kid's room. All right. And so um, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, yes, yeah, the best all around, but you need literally two different side ends, one for like 125 grain nozzler acubons or 110 grain. Uh, Barnes copper bullets or the 110 grain Hornady CX bullet that's going to penetrate deep enough and explode at those velocities, um, or even a 110 VMAX. Um, you know, that would be ideal uh, for home defense. But the AR 10, like, is better off with hunting 150 grain, 168 grain, 180 grain, depending on the grain you got. So, yeah, I would definitely say. Uh, that while it is the best all-around rifle, and I gr agree with that, you're going to have to do a lot of moving your sights back and forth if you use it for home defense. So um, that being said, mine's loaded up for home defense, and it's got 150-grain TTSX in it. Because my neighbors are a little farther apart, I don't have neighbors across the street, and there's a lot of things going on there. So anyway, good night, Luminous Dave. There you go. HK91 for the win. Going old school. There you go. HCO 308. Yeah, if you can't sh shoot proficiently, which I can, with iron sights on a pistol, learn to do that before you make the switch to red dots on a pistol to make things easier to learn. I agree. What's up, Creasy EQ? It's good to see you. All right. XDM model 45, 16 plus 1, prefer taking that to the range. Yep. Get a 308. Better versatility and larger bullet weight choices. There you go. Let's see, we already answered that question. Yeah, so I like my 308. Like, like that's my go-to battle rifle. Like, that's my go-to rifle. It's, you know, it's lightweight enough for me. Uh, my big, heavy, fat butt. So it kind of is what it is, so. I have taken a 458, I'm assuming a 458 lot, a 460 Weatherby, and a 416 on different African hunts. I prefer the 416. There you go. Okay. Brutal Bob, what'd you get? What'd you hunt? 270 and 20-inch barrel. I don't like 270 and a 24-inch barrel. I don't like it at all, but that's me in my opinion. Um, you know, like I like to say, 270 is like 30 out six for women. Okay. No offense to you ladies. We love you out there. Okay. No offense to you, Chook. Okay, it is what it is. I don't think home defense sighting matters much for rifles. In house distance, it's still about two inches below your reticle when you're at 30-ish feet. Yeah, but if that, okay, hear me out, Chris. Okay, so let's say you throw in a mag of 110 grains. They're going 3,300 feet per second out of an 18-inch barrel with the right load, okay? They're going 3,250, let's, let's just say that, okay, which I've shown on the channel before. All right, they're going that fast, and um, yeah, it's two two inches in your sight, but your sight is sighted in for 150 grains that are going 2,800, 2,850, maybe even 2,750 if they're factory, all right, or even 2,690 if they're factory loads. So you're sighted in with something that's going a lot so, slower. Your distance is going to be way different. Uh, that's 500 feet per second slower, you know, maybe 600 feet per second slower um, between the factory 150s and, you know, hand-loaded 110s. 
or even factory 110s, 300 feet per second slower. They're going 31. Like, I don't see the point in, um, uh, I don't see the point. I, I, like, I think your point's going to be mute. If you, if you practiced with it and you'd saw that that 110 is flying faster and going higher, yeah, I think you'd see it. Yeah, uh, I got some to test somewhere. I was I shot a bunch of them trying to test my sights out on the forty five seventy. I'll probably have to pick up another box. I don't recommend anything that tumbles going against an angled bear head. Like bullets that tumble tend to tumble in the direction that they get hit with an angle. So um, I I just don't I don't I don't think that's a good idea. I'd much rather have a hard cast because. Okay, you're hitting a slanted surface, right? The bottom of the bullet here is going to hit the, the glass or the bare skull, whatever slanted surface it is. It'll tip up and go down. Bullets go down when they hit an angled surface. Um, there's a lot of people that have been told in police training, my buddy who had 45s told in police training, they, they, they don't. They go up. Nope. Okay. That's only if the windshield is bulletproof do they go up. All right. Um, so... Hard cast to do that. Now, if it's tumbling and it hits and it tumbles extra and it's off center, you never know where it's going to tumble. It's designed to tumble. So they'll tumble down first if it's a solid bullet not designed to tumble. Okay. I Hey, I, I remember seeing them for two bucks. Am I the only one that doesn't want to touch it off of 5.56 indoors? My hearing is bad enough. I'd rather stick with a pistol caliber. Yeah, I, I get that idea. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't ke keep a pair of Howard lights next to your bed. Okay. I don't see why you would, wouldn't do that. Um, also, 155 grain in that Banshee would be awesome with a suppressor. Um, even though it'd be supersonic, you'd be delivering 900 foot-pounds of energy. Um, so, 850, something like that. I've harvested the big five five times in six trips to Africa. I was told at a shot show this year I'm the last person alive that has taken the big five with a bow, a handgun, and a rifle. Nice, Boodle Rob. Cool to see. Hey, do you make your own videos, or is that just your channel like logo? Are you uh, making your own videos? Let me know. I own a Smith & Wesson 500 mag and a 460 mag performance center. I hope to own the lever guns in those calibers one day. That would be a nice pair. Yep. I don't want to touch off anything indoors. Yeah, if you've shot indoors, you don't want to touch off anything, especially without hearing protection on. Keep your pair of Howard lights by the bed. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Yep. I agree with that. I want two want a 460 lever, but they're a bit spendy. I think on Fort Scott's YouTube channel, there's a, a video there, 5562E going through a windshield. Surprisingly, it stayed on flight course. That's cool. That's cool. That's my precisely my thoughts on getting the Banshee. Well, that 30 rounds of 10 millimeter. There you go. Yeah. If, um, if you can, I would get the Hornady loaded, 155 grains. They're only like... 25 or 50 feet per second slower than the underwoods i get the hornady loaded 155 grain xtps um for the banshee i just think you'll do better with this the round not being so hot All right it's still pretty hot but not being so hot so agreed 556 is a lot yeah and 308 is even more and my 45 super right next to me is even more uh, or even more than like 10 millimeter and stuff so it is what it is so it is a lot when things go bump in the night. And most of the time I run out and it's just the turtle in the damn turtle tank shifting her rocks around like, damn it, I got up for nothing. So. I'm a supporter of channels I like. I'm thinking about making videos of our house herd of deer at my property. Cool. Yeah. Make some cool videos. I'll share them. All right. Get you some subscribers. I have such a plethora of 10 millimeter ammo to play with. There you go. In the situation of fight or flight, the concussion in a house from a firearm can affect you. However, there's been studies where it hasn't, hasn't because of adrenaline. Yeah, your adrenaline is going and 
uh, they call it sound aversion or uh, noise aversion, and it does happen sometime. So, this is what it is. Okay, I want to get one of those Glock Roni kits for my Glock 20 and get a longer barrel, 12 to 16 inches. Any thoughts on that or recommendations? Okay, um, I forgot the manufacturer. I've got one of their barrels upstairs. I forgot the manufacturer. Uh, only one company, and they're out of Europe. I ordered a 16-inch barrel or a 10-inch barrel from them. They do make a 16-inch barrel for the Glock 20. And, um, yeah, it was um, it was uh, not a great barrel. Uh, um, and it was not fully supported chamber either. So you run the same risk of running over pressured rounds, bulging and maybe, you know, even kabooming in that as you would your standard Glock barrel. Um, so you want a fully supported chamber barrel. Um, for that, the long, long, longest one is nine inches by Lone Wolf that I know, know of is the nine inch barrel by Lone Wolf. And that you usually have to send back and get polished because it's not that great. Uh, I would be love to get together and get uh, KKM to make us a, a a batch of tw you know twelve inch barrels, twelve point five inch barrels for the Glock twenty slash forty. Uh, but I think you'd do better off if you went meta tactical, uh, which is another kit that puts your Glock in a bull pulp and it is a sixteen inch barrel. So um, I think that'd be the USA. At, I'm going to call you Triangle Peace USA. That's what it looks like up here. Um, but yeah, Triangle Peace USA. Yeah, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would go meta tactical. That is what it is. Do you have a favorite load at disaster effects? Ninja Turtles. Yep. Brutal Bob is a great guy. Cool. Yes, thank you, Brutal Bob. I was looking for the term auditory exclusion. There you go. I think that's the same phenomenon where you don't notice the sound when hunting and buck fever has set in. I don't want them to take the chance. My hearing is bad. Yeah, no, you have auditory exclusion in the moment. Like a lot of people said auditory exclusion in the moment. But like it does, that doesn't mean it doesn't damage your hearing. Yeah. Okay. I'm a firm believer in practice how you fight. Most people don't carry ear pro when they carry and have to discharge a firearm in self-defense. That I agree with. Okay. But I'm talking about having the, the ear pro laying you on your nightstand thank you you're not too bad as so um so i shot a big sow with two e556 to see if it actually tumbled she dropped on the spot and to my surprise the exit wound showed a sideways bullet exit hole found the bullet itself weighed 50 i grain school cool cool Tinnitus sucks. Where's Ear Pro? Yep, there you go. Thank you. I'll look up the meta tactical. As for barrel length on 5.56 and up, I personally don't like shooting SBRs because of the concussion compared to 16 inch barrels. I agree. I agree. Yep. I don't blame you here. I only have a 22 can right now. So, is what it is. Two. I know two people that have Ear Pro next to their bed. Me and my wife. It's right there next to the guns. So that we could don it on and go quickly. All right? It gives us an advantage. We can hear them. Got it turned on. So. So. Centerfire go boom. I have two videos on this subject. 25, 6, odd 6 or 6, 5. Uh, I personally prefer the 6.5. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the 25.6. But as you'll see on those videos, at 200 yards or even 100 yards, sometimes even at muzzle, if you have the same length barrel, the 6.5 will gain energy on the 25.6 because the bullet, the BC of the bullet's heavier and weighs more. But yeah, I have two videos on that. Go look up 25.6 versus 6.5 Creedmoor, and they are great. So. Thanks, Creasy. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you coming to the live, and thanks uh, for enjoying our videos. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, it. Uh, yeah, there's a <laughs> another part two coming up too as well. I appreciate it. So, and guys, don't forget if you can support us on Patreon. Um, you know, I, I make thirteen bucks a month on Patreon. It's not like that many of y'all are supporting. Um, 
I make more than that. Y'all send more than that, but then Patreon takes it out for the people I support on Patreon. So <clears throat> it is what it is. I don't like anything under 300 win mag for big game. I had a buddy kill an 850 pound grizzly with a two, with a two what? The wait times the suppressors drop big time. I spoke with a local dealer today, and they're getting they got four day approvals. I've I've heard this too. Hearing Conservation Act needs to pass, and suppressors shouldn't be NFA items. I agree. I agree completely. All right. Paul Ryan had the chance to pass it when he was leader of the House and Trump was uh, president for the first two years. Okay. The Republicans did nothing. I got a two-day approval. I'll make it a second one. Yeah, I might have to get in on this this stuff before it goes too bad. He killed it with the 30 out of six, but it took four shots. Yeah. They're tough. It could take four shots with 300 Win Mag. It could take four shots with 338. I shot my grizzly bear, and it was only a 400 pound bear, five and a half feet in interior grizzly, not a big coastal brown bear. I shot it right through the throat with a 338 Win Mag, 250 grain nozzle partition at 88 yards. And uh, it's the bear rug you see in the video. And, uh, you know, it's a. Uh, uh, it's a uh, um, a shot of the air. I got up to it, and it was still reflex breathing. I was going like <laughs> every once in a while, I'd just twitch and would do that. And so it still took two nine millimeters to the head and three forty five supers to the head. Okay, three of those bad boys, two hundred grain hard cast semi wide cutters right there. Um, they're hard cast semi wide cutters, and it took two of the three of them. So it is what it is. 22 arc will it be popular or sink like the wsms it's gone i think it's already gone yeah it is scary how tough they are now again shot placement makes a difference i mean mine dropped splat on the on the and didn't get back up right there i mean it was just a it went from being a brown bear to a brown mess on the mountain but uh dropped right there so 22 arc has been around a long time in prs yeah um cool but i haven't seen it on the shelves like I, you can't buy any ammo for it around here you know it's definitely interesting here's the thing is they claim 22 250 to velocities and it's nowhere close like i can get 3600 with 22 250 and a 62 grain bullet and that they're trying to claim like 33 3400 and oh it gets 22 250 velocities bull honk and crap i weren't one in deep bull honk and crap so yeah yeah, I'm just I'm just telling Hornady like it is. I'm mentioning you and calling you out loud, Hornady. The 22 arc is not a 22250, and I and I'm using information that's in your load manual. So don't give me that. I'm using information that's in the Barnes load manual. So yeah, big boar hogs are pretty tough animals, and the big sow hogs too. You can't buy ammo for 6GT, but it's still around. Likewise for 86 blackout. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, but I have to buy it on the shelf in Alaska. I ha or I have to go through an importer exporter, and that's expensive. So, is what it is. Like, um, yeah, it'll be difficult, but like, I can, uh, I can get it here. It's just difficult and expensive. I I don't want anything that's not a common caliber right now. Like even my six five by two eighty four, um, I can find ammo on the shelf, but it's so expensive. Right now, it's just like I'm handloading everything I can for it. So there's that. Yep. So like I, I just I don't I don't see the point in going to these wildcats that are not on the shelf. If you're doing it for competition, great. I don't shoot competition. I probably should, but I'm not. And so, kind of is what it is. All right. Uh, I'm gonna pop my neck here. So, all right. Yeah, the A6 blackout does seem pretty cool, though. I uh shot one with a 12 gauge shotgun, number four shot, number 
Yeah, number six shot high brass, and it went for a long time. Like, it took three or four rounds of that thing to get it down. Raccoons are very tough as well. Yep. Haven't shot, man. Okay. Have you ever heard of this recipe for bear meat? A1 ketchup, lemon juice, and beer. I recommend it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it sounds good. I'm not a big fan of A1 or ketchup, but... Raccoons are very tough as well. Let me do that one. Alright. Shut and shot my 500 Magna over a year due to ammo prices. When I moved to my new house, I'm setting up a reloading station. There you go. Good luck. Uh, Yeah. The rifles are still made, but I haven't seen two Citroen in years. Yeah, okay. That's not the point. Like, I would never buy one because you can't find the, the ammo. I have seen it in a, like, within the last year and a half, so... Is what it is. Have you ever heard of this recipe? Okay, we already went over that one. That's a good one. Yep. I like my six eight six blackouts. Eight six blackouts a really interesting caliber. I like the idea. You know, get that eight hundred pounds of energy by a big old bullet still going suppressed. Yeah, that's good. Soy sauce is good. Yep. Saw some 22 to 15 multiple Walmarts becoming more widespread now. Yeah, I can go get it any time I want to. I just don't want to, sh like, <laughs> my gun, my rifle, the barrel is so inaccurate. I don't want to shoot it. Like, um, like, I can't get that thing to have any, I have accuracy issues. So, like, it just will not group. And I'm putting it on a lower with a, you know, nice trigger and everything. So, and I just put on a uh, a bigger scope, and I, I did have issues that one of the scope, could have been the scope, uh, wasn't tightened down correctly. <laughs> my fault. So, it is. I built my owner a 260 AR. There you go. An AR-10 and 260 is nice. So, I have only killed on bear, on bear. I could not make that stuff taste good, and I'm from Louisiana. Uh, I've only killed one bear, yeah. Well, if it's been eating fish, if it's been eating fish, if it's near a lake and it's eating fish, yeah, good luck there. Okay, good luck. So, yep. That's the first time I've ever heard anyone say the 2250 was that inaccurate. Man, I have not found a load for it. I just don't want to keep playing around for it. I got other stuff to do. Like, I literally loaded up some M855A1 tips for it. Next time I get sent body armor, that's what I'm doing. Love to get a 22250, but I have a 223 bolt already, so what would be the point? I'll sell you mine. All right. I'm kidding, kidding, YouTube. We're not talking about selling guns here. Um, Tesla and war, war scopes are worth every penny. Cool. In the Wichita Mountains. Cool. Okay. And uh, cool. The bear is in Arkansas. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, black bears all over from Florida to Alaska. It's like more prolific range than white tailed deer, even. So, although there are some white tail in Alaska, they they come in from Canada occasionally. They sh shoot on site because they don't want chronic wasting disease getting here. So, remember wildcat cartridges is the eight six black house at the top of my list. There you go. Cool. Br brutal Bob will have to go shoot some for on a video someday. This guy here in my town selling fake AR-500 plates. So crappy, he ripped off my cousin. Oh, wow. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd, uh, do, uh, I definitely wouldn't, uh, do that. So, uh, yeah, I buy from reputable man manufacturers there. Um, but yeah, a good AR-500 plate will stop a lot, though. But you need to make sure that you have it wrapped in something that's going to, in a Kevlar. Like I tell people, put a wrap on it, put a trauma pad beneath it, and a level 3A plate uh, on top of it. So, kind of is what it is. So, is what it is. 
Well, guys, I'm going to um, go ahead and take off tonight. Um, I'm not, still not feeling that great. And so I appreciate y'all coming and watching live. Uh, I'll do more reloading lives this weekend, hopefully. Um, all right, one last question. 243 or 22250? I'd go 243. Uh, no question about it. Because because you can uh, you can get bullets that are suitable for deer. And people have even taken moose and elk with one. So. Black Bear, Michigan, or Alaska, Griffiths, and then in Canada or Alaska. That's cool. A lot of my Wildcats. Every time prevents me from reloading. There you go. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a good night. Feel better. Appreciate it, Sunny Guns. All right. Peace out, Creasy. Hey, is your name Creasy from uh, uh, Creasy uh, from uh, Man on Fire? Is that that where you get it, Creasy? Creasy. What did she call her bear? Creasy. So many good lines in that movie. I wish you had more time. Yeah. It's like forgiveness is between them and God. And my job is to arrange the meeting. That's a good one. That's some good ones there. Have a great night, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin Claus. Thanks, TNY Rag. Uh, how do I say that? Tiny Ragged? I don't know. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name there. All right. Tried four different powders with 130 grain barn CTS 6 and still can't get consistent groups. Your rifle may just may not like the bullet. Uh, may not like the length. Take the powder that grouped the best, even if the best was three inches, and start playing with the length. Um, you know, so good night, guys. Godspeed. Take care. We'll see you at the range. All right. Have a good one. My, my little four-year-old's calling me. Hi, Dada. So there we go. Y'all take care now.